Good morning. Welcome everybody to our program this morning. We are talking about self-publishing. It's a DIY toolkit for writers. And when you go into self-publishing, um, yeah, let's skip over that. Um, we want to do a quick introduction of your, your panel of speakers. And we'll start at the end um, with Shayla Kirsten. Uh, my name is Shayla Kirsten. I've been writing since 2004, published since 2006. I write mostly erotic romance. Um, I haven't written much of anything lately. My day job is accounting, and it's gotten a little carried away. But I'm getting back into it, starting with getting back in our group with this panel. And you're published with? I'm published with Laura's Cave, Liquid Silver Books, Kensington Books. Um, can't remember them all. I'm also self-published on one book, which it's an interesting journey to self-publish. Okay. I'm Boy Relinger. I've been writing since 2008. I published with Alora's Cave, Turquoise Morning Press, and I have some self-publishing projects as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm L. James. I'm also Myla Jackson. I have two different pen names that I write under. And I write for Harlequin, uh, Intrigue, Harlequin Nocturne, Harlequin Nocturne Cravings, Harlequin uh, Romantic Suspense. <laughs> and uh, as Molly Jackson, I write uh, for Sam Payne. I've written for Laura's Cave, Kensington, and Avon. And right now I have 18 self-published books out there, short stories. Um, so I have a little bit of, of uh, learned expertise in the self-publishing arena. So hopefully I'll be able to share some of that insight with you. I'm Delilah Devlin, and my sister and I, L. James is my sister, um, we started out this together um, December 31st, 1999 at midnight when we decided we didn't want to be working in a cubicle for the rest of our lives. So um, we've been writing ever since. Um, I'm published with, I, I write it mostly erotic romance, but um, I have my first straight paranormal coming out in January with uh, Montlake. But I'm published with um, Avon, Berkeley, uh, Kensington, um, Harlequin Spice, um, e-published with uh, Alora's Cave, and Sam Hain, self-published, and I also do editing for Cleos Press, if you've seen like the Cowboy Lust or the Girls Who Bite um, anthologies, those are mine. And I'm Kelly Reap. Um, I work for myself in public relations. Uh, I like to tease these ladies that I've been published in Rice Farmer Magazine and the Delta Farmer Press. <laughs> Not a lot of romance in there, but you know, maybe there's a hot rice farmer somewhere. And I'm going to talk to you today about doing some of your own public relations and marketing. Bore will be the first speaker. I should have known that. I thought you knew that. Um, be talking briefly about the pros and cons. Should I go back one second? What self-publishing is and the pros and cons. Questions about if you should or shouldn't self-publish. When you move into publishing your work, you're moving from the role of artist into the role of a business person. And it's very important to understand the business end of it and understand what you're getting into before you make that jump, if you want to make a successful jump into self-publishing. One of the first steps is understanding what self-publishing really is and what it's not. One common thing I hear a lot on the internet is self-published. That means it's an e-book, it's a digital book. Well, self-publishing, publishing and digital or hardcover, hard copy are completely different things. Um, digital is simply a, a different format. It's just like a paperback or a hardcover. It's not about who publishes the book. You can be published with a paperback or with digital, just like you can be traditionally published with a paperback or with digital. So it's very important to understand which is which. Um, the, some of the pros and cons. I've lost 
track of my stuff, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of the pros that I've heard from people who are interested, I did an informal poll online and asked why they wanted, why people were interested in self-publishing. And some of the answers that came back were they were interested in creative freedom over their project. <coughs> they wanted to be able to control what they put in it, what they didn't put in it. They didn't have to want to have to worry about what a publisher wanted or didn't want. Um, they wanted to be able to do their own covers, control the look of it. Very interested in just being the one who made the choices for their book. And that is a very positive thing about self-publishing is you get to choose what to do. That's one of the reasons I went into self-publishing. I was told by a publisher that, you know, this book just really isn't going to fit in here and I'm not sure where it would fit in. But I loved my story. I felt it was a strong story. I, and so I took it and published it myself through some of the outlets that they'll be discussing later. Um, another thing is speed. Oftentimes when you send in to an agent or an editor, it can be month, weeks, months, years before you hear anything back. And that's, it's very hard to sit on a project for two years and still not know if somebody is interested in publishing you or not. So being able to just get it out there, control when it's out there, say I want a Christmas release this year, not two years out, it, it gives you a lot of control over when people get to see your work gets things moving very quickly. You also have a lot of flexibility. You can change things. You didn't like that cover. It didn't turn out quite right. Later on you can go back and change it. You can edit your work, amend it, expand it, put it in an anthology with another one. You really have a lot of marketing flexibility and um, choices available to you when you do it yourself, which you don't have to worry about a publisher scheduled in. There's also higher royalty rates when you publish on your own. When you publish through, the rates I found through digital publishers can be as low as 15, 10%, but then if you self-publish you can get up to 18% of your cover copy, cover cost back depending on the outlet where it's marketed. Um, yeah, let me add a little, that's for print, right? Let me, yeah. Different e-publishers that, that do the publishing for you will have the different rates. Um, I publish with Harlequin, I get a 6%, not 35%, not 40%, 6%. So I might get 36 cents on each book. And that's if they buy it you know, through Harlequin. If they buy it at Walmart, I get 4%. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's Any time you go through, your publisher takes you through a third party sales site, that third party sales site gets a cut of it, and then you get a cut of what's left. Um, when I was researching my digital publishers, I was finding rates between 10% and 40% of cover cost for your royalty rates. And as I said, when I went to investigate my self-publishing, I was seeing rates between 35% up to 80% of cover price. So it really was a larger chunk of the, of the pie going to me. Now, of course, with all those pros also come the cons. You have your creative freedom, but then you're also in charge of everything. You have to, you don't have the technical support to take care of formatting, of making sure your cover is the right size, of making sure you know how to upload, of anything that goes wrong with the book, you are completely responsible for. You also have to handle your own promotion and marketing platform, which publishers have built in their own markets. There are people who will go out and buy this book strictly because it's Harlequin and they like Harlequin. And when you're going out on your own, you don't have that behind you. You don't have that initial, it's a Harlequin book, you're going to like it. You have, this is me. Enjoy. So. <laughs> Amongst the other 100,000 people that are me, enjoy. And, yeah. And the market is very flooded with books. Very flooded. So it's very hard to stand out on your own. So you really need to get a lot of thought into your marketing platform, how you're going to promote your book. 
uh, there's also production costs, which you suddenly have to bear the burden of. You know, it's not a good idea. You can, but it's not a good idea to just go out, put your book out there, put together your own cover, edit it yourself, and here you go. Because I think any tour of Amazon's uh, self-published or free market books can show you some mistakes people make. It's very easy to get a cover that does not draw the eye, does not reflect your book, or sell it to the appropriate market. Um, and in editing, I've always said, if you don't know you're making a mistake, you can't fix it. I, I read a book that had the word sight. There are three ways to spell sight. C-I-T, S-I-G-H-T, S-I-T. And they mean completely different things. And the author didn't know it. And she spelled it one way consistently throughout the book. If you don't know you're making that mistake, you don't know what to fix. So it's very important that you go out and you pay for editing. You have somebody who can help you fix your mistakes. You help have somebody who can help you with the cover art and make sure that you have a cover that is going to draw the right kinds of people. You have to pay for the images you use in cover art. And then if you plan to go with a print book, you have to cover the cost of buying the books that you're going to sell. And then you have to make your money back before you see any proceeds on it. There's also distribution. You're in charge of deciding where your book is going to be sold, how it's going to be sold, finding a market that will take your book, because there are a lot of places you're not going to be able to sell a print. You, you buy your print book, you can't get it in a traditional bookstore. They don't want self-published books in most bookstores. So. And the reason behind that is that most uh, brick and mortar bookstores, they want to be able to return the book. And if you're a self-published or print-on-demand type book, they can't return that. So they don't want to take on the responsibility of, of trying to sell a book they may not sell and can't get their money back on. Yeah, the, so they don't want to take a chance with you. A bookstore's goal is to get your book off the shelf one way or the other, preferably selling it. But if they can't sell it, they return it to the company, they get their money back, and they use that for more books to sell, more recent books. You've got to think with releases coming out every week, they don't want a lot of slow-selling books on the shelf. So um, another thing about the distribution part of that is that you're right. You have to decide where you're going to distribu distribute it. With the print, or the print, with like a Harlequin, the reason why I can they can get give me six percent is because they have distribution. They can get into the WalMarts. They can. I mean, they have mass distribution. Across the, the the whole world, you know, I might be in 16 different state or countries, so they have distribution. Whereas if you're on your own, you've done your self publishing, you're not going to have that distribution. You're not going to be able to get in a Walmart, so you have to accept that, and you have to. Um, yeah, publishers have publish established con contracts with um, catalogs, catalog companies that then market the books to bookstores, and they have contracts that put books directly in certain outlets. Those are advantages that, as an individual, you're not going to have. Now, there is hope for people who have a platform. If you can establish a platform, if you can get your name out there, your sales can be very decent, very, very decent. <laughs> it's just all, the burden is all on you, and that is something that you have to understand and be prepared for before you go in to the business end of the publishing. 